Welcome back to Cardinalities.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic, with a new video every single day for the whole month of October. This is month number two, looking at operations and relations of sets. Today we are finally moving on from operations to relations in set theory. Now, Earlier we discussed how we can think of predicates as sets of objects. However, that does not explain how we can represent relations like is greater than, or is to the left of, is the father of, is next to. These cannot be represented by a set of objects since they require pairs of objects in relation to each other and not other objects in a set. Two may be greater than one, but it's not greater than three. So I can't just have a set of things that are greater than, because you need two objects paired together. They are ordered. Texas is larger than Kansas, but Kansas is not larger than Texas. You can't necessarily switch them around. So relations are going to require a little bit different machinery to represent. Fortunately, we have that. In order to represent relations, we're going to use classes of ordered pairs. Generally, we represent a relation between two objects as A, R, B, signifying A bears relation R to B. In set theory, we could represent the same statement with the ordered pair A, B is a member of R, where R is a relation, but R in italics is a class of ordered pairs. Take the relation x, t, y, where we'll define, which we'll define as x times y equals 12, okay? Where x and y are both whole numbers. So 3, t, 4, and 1, t, 12 would be true. 3 bears the relation 3 times 4 equals 12 to 4, and 1 bears the relation 1 times 12 equals 12 to 12. But 3t3 or 0.05t24 would be false since 3 times 3 don't equal 12 and 0.5 isn't a whole number. So it doesn't fit all of the criteria of the relation. We could define the class representing this relation as t is the class of the ordered pair 1, 12, the ordered pair 2, 6, the ordered pair 3, 4, the ordered pair 4, 3, the ordered pair 6, 2, in the ordered pair 1, 12. Note we have to do both directions for all of those ordered pairs because they are explicitly ordered. Where the ordered pair 3, 4 is a member of T is materially equivalent to 3, T, 4. Where T in italics represents the class and T not in italics represents the relation. Some authors may use them interchangeably and not distinguish between the class and relation, just basically defining the relation as the class. Here I'm going to be a little bit more specific, but only within the nuance of doing italics or not. We're going to use the notation uh, class of XY bar XTY to denote the set T with all and only ordered pairs x, y, where x bears relation t to y, similar to the predication relation that we looked at earlier, or the predication uh, symbol that we looked at earlier. Or in other words, for all a and all r, a equals this class of the relation r, means by definition for all b and all c, where note that those b and c are not in italics, they are objects, they are things, they're not necessarily sets or classes. The ordered pair BC is a member of class A is materially equivalent to B bears relation R to C. We're going to call this class relation definition in proofs. Now broadly in set theory you are only going to be instantiating these things into classes and sets, but we are giving a very broad definition here, one to help understand it, but also so that we could use it in other contexts if we needed to. To put it simply, a relation in set theory is the class of all ordered pairs of things that make that relation true. The relation is a planet in our solar system further away from the sun then, has as its members all combinations that would make the statement true. So Earth, Mercury, is a member because Earth is a planet in our solar system further from the Sun than Mercury, but Mercury Earth would not be, in the same way Jupiter Venus would not. 
The relations that we care about in set theory have as their members classes. These relations are all subclasses of the Cartesian product V times V. Basically, this is the class of all ordered pairs, all classes of all ordered pairs. V times V, or the Cartesian product of the universe, is the class of all possible ordered pairs. For the rest of the series, we'll refer to classes that represent relations and are subclasses of the Cartesian product of the universe simply as relations. Or more formally, for all A, A is a relation means by definition that A is a subclass of the universal, the Cartesian product of the universal class. We'll call this relation definition in proofs. Up next, we're going to take a look at two important characteristics of relations. First off, we'll take a look at the domain of relations, and then we'll take a look at the range of relations. So if you're a little confused still about relations, don't worry, we're going to stay on them for a couple more videos. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.